Hi everyone, I'm Sean, co-founder and chief hardware architect at Cerebra Systems. Let's dive into process. As I said, Moore's Law is alive and well. But we ask ourselves, can we amplify it even further? Historically, transistor density improvements have been amplified further by gradual increases in die size. And on the right, I've, plot, I've plotted die sizes over the last several decades. And as you can see, there's a steady increase. But we're hitting a wall now, and die sizes are not really getting much larger. And there are a few reasons for this. First, larger chips have lower yield. And second, there are fundamental challenges in lithography that prevent increasing the reticle size. And then lastly, larger chips are more difficult to power and to cool. Now, the industry has been creative in finding ways to extend beyond single die and solving some of these challenges. For example, with advanced chiplets and MCM techniques, we're seeing two to maybe five times more silicon area in a single device. And recently, we've been encouraged by some early announcements of concepts using advanced interposer techniques, even using wafers as an interposer. With techniques like this, when they're available, we might see up to 20 times more silicon area in a single device. And we believe techniques like this across the industry are highly valuable because they extend the effective size of the die. But let me show you our approach at Cerebrus to show it's possible to push even further with tighter co-design. In 2019, we introduced the wafer scale engine. And earlier last year, we announced the second generation. It is the largest chip ever built at 56 times larger than the largest GPU today. And it's a single piece of silicon. It's in fact the largest square you can carve out of a round 300 millimeter wafer. At over 46,000 square millimeters in size, with 2.6 trillion transistors on a single chip, we can fit 850,000 cores. With all of these cores integrated on a single piece of silicon, we can get some truly mind-boggling numbers for memory and fabric performance, because everything is on chip. Now to do this required deep co-design to solve the three main problems of yield, process, and power. Starting with yield. Yield is a problem even for traditional chips. So it becomes a fundamental challenge for extremely large chips. At wafer scale, it would be literally impossible to yield a full wafer with zero defects. Defects in silicon and in manufacturing, they just can't be avoided, even in mature processes. So to solve the yield problem, we used redundancy. We architected our chip as a giant array of uniform, small cores connected with a 2D mesh fabric. And the design includes in it redundant cores and redundant fabric links. The picture on the right shows an example. There are redundant cores built into the hardware, shown on the top in light yellow. And on the left, when there are no defects, the redundant cores, they're not used. But on the right, when there is a defect, we use the redundant cores to take its place, and then we reconnect the fabric using the redundant fabric links. And this fully restores the logical fabric. Now with this technique, we can drive yield very high with very low cost. But this is only possible because of co-design with the chip architecture. In fact, as you can see, the yield solution is baked deeply into the fundamentals of the fabric design itself. The second major challenge is how do you extend beyond traditional lithography limits? Creating larger radicals has some fundamental challenges. So instead, we worked within the standard independent die on a single wafer. But instead of cutting up the individual chips, we cut out the largest square from that round wafer. In a standard fab process, independent die are separated by what's called a scribe line. And this is used traditionally for 
me uh, mechanical barriers and for test structures. But we add wires to cross those scribe lines to connect these otherwise independent die. We do this using high-level metal layers in the process, and this extends the 2D mesh fabric, resulting in a fully homogeneous array of cores across the entire wafer. This is only possible, again, with co-design between the fab, in our case TSMC, and the chip architecture. These seemingly simple short wires, they're a big, big deal because they provide the same bandwidth within a die, but across the entire wafer. That's only possible because we're spanning less than a millimeter of distance on silicon. And for chip designers, we do this all the time without even thinking about it. When you compare that to traditional 30s-based techniques, the difference is massive. And it's really just physics. Driving bits less than a millimeter on chip is much, much easier than through a package, through connectors, through printed circuit boards, and sometimes even cables. And this results in orders of magnitude improvement when you compare to traditional IOs, as you can see in the table. We're able to achieve about an order of magnitude more bandwidth per unit area, and almost two orders of magnitude better power efficiency per bit. But there is a clear trade-off here. And in many ways, by moving that communication problem onto the chip, we've made it much easier. But we've also shifted that complexity that would have otherwise been in the chip in the form of CERTES. We've shifted it, and we shifted that complexity into the package. So this is only possible with extremely tight co-design with the package and the system around it. At the package level, what we've done is we've taken all of that silicon that would have been traditionally spread out physically in different servers across different racks, and we've moved it all into a concentrated location, consuming on the order of 20 kilowatts of power. That concentrated high density exceeds traditional power and cooling capabilities. For power, we need to bring the power in, and traditionally that's done through current distribution in power planes in the PCB. But the current densities here are just too high to distribute laterally in the PCB. And as you can see in the picture, if we did that, we would only be able to power the edges of the wafer. Now once you get the power in, you have to bring the power out in the form of heat. And, and again, traditionally, cooling is done through direct airflow. But, direct, but the heat density here, again, is also too high for that to be effective. If we did that, we would only be cooling the edges of the wafer. So here, the solution was to co-design a 3D package. We bring the current in perpendicular to the wafer by going directly through the PCB. And then we bring the heat out perpendicular to the wafer using water, through a cold plate. And this solution allows us to power and to cool every die evenly, both at the edges and the middle of the wafer. But as you can already see, this is not your typical chip package. So it needs to be co-designed with the full system around it. And this is what that looks like. We start with the wafer, it's held vertically. Then it's surrounded by what we call the engine block. This is the subsystem that holds the wafer and the package. We bring the power in from the front, again, perpendicular to the wafer. And then we take the heat out from the back through the coal plate and a manifold. And then lastly, we, bring this, we build the entire system surrounding this engine block. Here, the entire system architecture is co-designed to support the wafer scale chip from ground up. The power supplies are all in the front, right next to the water pumps, and there's a heat exchanger below to remove the heat externally. Power comes in from the front, 
again, perpendicular to the wafer. The wafer generates the heat, and then that heat is removed through the wafer, through the cold plate, and the water uh, <clears throat> being pumped into the heat exchanger below and removed from the system. And then that cool water is then recirculated back to the wafer, and this forms a fully contained internal water loop. And this is what the full system looks like. This is a system where every detail is co-designed to enable a chip that is 56 times larger than traditional chips. With this level of co-design between the system, the package, the fab, and the chip architecture, we can literally push the envelope of die size beyond traditional scaling. And it's with these new co-design approaches, such as wafer scale chips and other novel packaging, we believe these are critical parts to solving the grand challenge in front of us.